I wonder whether we'd be standing here if Julie Louisa Rickard had not written a history of the Munsters. She was the widow of Lieutenant Colonel Victor Rickard, who was the battalion commander who died the next day after the last absolution of the Munsters at Rue de Bois, 100 years ago today. She painted such a perfect picture in words of the last absolution that this iconic painting emerged by Mantegna. It is truly one of the most recognized paintings of the First World War. Everybody knows of it. What is not known so well is that the next day there was the Battle of Obers Ridge, a complete and utter disaster. 11,000 casualties. The Munster Battalion would have been about 800 men and certainly 400 of them perished. And according to Father Gleason, only 200 could turn up for parade the next day. But I wondered whether we would remember Father Gleason today. And of course, we must remember that it was not only the painting that he was remembered in, but Robert Graves in his book, Goodbye to All That, specifically refers to the bravery of Father Gleason. And then, with some poetic license, I think Siegfried Spassoon mentions him in his works as well. But if we were not here because of that, we should be here. Because this is an extraordinary man. A man who had obvious bravery, but who was a chaplain to everyone no matter what their religion or their creed was, and who wrote countless letters. And I think we have representatives from the county of Limerick, and I know that he was a hero on the streets of Limerick because he wrote so often telling the mothers and wives that their sons and husbands were alive and well. And then he wrote these amazing letters of condolence to those who had perished, saying they gave a great sacrifice. So I hope today, not only will we remember Father Francis Gleeson, but we will remember the 850 or so Irish men who volunteered as chaplains in the First World War, who carried out a remarkable role. It was only when I knew that we were having this reenactment today that I started to do a bit of research, and there is an incredible historiography about chaplaincy in the First World War, and I won't go into it, but it is, it is extraordinary the tensions between the church, the Anglican church and the Roman Catholic church. Within the Roman Catholic church, the tensions between the hierarchies in Dublin and Armagh and Westminster. And then of course, Graves and his assertion that some chaplains were braver than others. But the chaplains themselves were extraordinary people who ministered to frightened, lonely, young men, and we must be ever grateful for them. When Frank Gleason, Francis Gleason Cain returned to Dublin, he served the poor in the community of Dublin just as he had served in the First World War. He's a great Tipperary man, but he was a really great chaplain and a great priest. And I am very proud that Last Heaven in some small way can help to commemorate him. Thank you. Thank you. Good gentlemen, you're all very welcome to Glasnevin in this very special Glasnevin weather. <laughs> we have one of these events, we seem to get this kind of weather. Uh, it's my pleasure to ask uh, Paddy Gleason, one of our tour guides here at Glasnevin, to read extracts from the diary of Father Francis Gleason on the 8th and 9th of May. 1915, <laughs>
Extracts from the Diaries of Father Francis Gleason, Saturday the 8th of May 1915. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. Sorry? Sorry, instructions from somewhere else. Um, thank you. We march out from Tome and Willow, Locon, about 900 strong. Our commanding officer being Major Rickard and the adjutant Captain Philgate. Two of the kindliest men I have come across. We leave at about 7 o'clock. The scenes of enthusiasm are extraordinary. I ride on my horse, give absolution to the battalion during rest on road. Opposite the Lacouton Church, between the shrine of Notre Dame de la Beaumont and another shrine, we have another rest. The men all sing hymns, especially Hail Glorious St. Patrick. I go further up near the trenches and bid goodbye to all. So sad. Sunday, the 9th of May, 1915. The famous 9th of May. What a day for the monsters. We lose at least 350 men between killed, wounded and missing. I slept in a bivouac with divisional transports at Locon last night after having returned from Windy Corner. The attack started at five o'clock, a lovely summer morn. I sat up in my bivouac listening to the roar of the guns and thinking of the poor boys making their matchless charge. Aeroplanes busy, up early, shave and off to Bethune. Took a return ambulance to number three field ambulance, advanced and walked from that to Windy Corner. A hard day. Monday, the 10th of May, 1915. I spent all night trying to console, aid and remove the wounded. It was ghastly to see them lying there in cold, cheerless outhouses on bare stretchers with no blanket to cover their freezing limbs. I shall never forget that young officer with the shattered left arm, nor poor Baradale of the Welsh, who was a great organist and played for me at Azar. Heartbreaking to see him dying there, wasting away. Hundreds lying out in cold air all night at Windy Corner. No ambulances coming. They came at last, at daylight. A letter from Father Gleason to the mother of Private Christy Barry, who carries the maximum on the 9th of May, 1915. Read by Father Gleason's grandnephew, a great grandnephew, Paul Gleason, from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Our nephew. Second of June, 1915. Dear Mrs. Barry, by this time, you will have heard of the death of your heroic boy in the attack on Sunday, 9th May, 1915. The greatest consolation I can offer you is to tell you that your son was well prepared for death, as the battalion had received the Holy Communion the night before the battle and were given absolution a few hours before the terrible ordeal. You need have no worry regarding your son's soul. I was careful and zealous about it and one of the best boys in the battalion. I knew him quite well and to know him was to love him. For he was one of the most cheerful and good-natured fellows I have met. Out of a battalion of cheerful and daring heroes, Barry stands out supreme. <laughs> I buried his body in a little cemetery beside the trenches, and several comrades lie beside him. A little cross marks his grave. He has made an immortal name for the gallantry and unselfishness with which he rescued the body of Captain Hawks. He had not the faintest idea of what fear was. There can be no greater heroism displayed than by shown by your son. 
you may well feel proud of being the mother of such a son. He has, by his thrilling acts of bravery, imprinted his name on all our breasts. And no honor, no matter how high, could be at all adequate to mark the greatness of this action. Out of a battalion of cheerful and der 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 daring heroes, Barry stands out supreme and admired by all, and his glorious death has inspired it. He was shot three times during the rescue of Captain Hawks. Still, in spite of a loss of blood and a tornado of bullets and shells, he held on to this task till he got the captain in safely over the parapet. Having done this, he fell down exhausted and mortally wounded into the British lines where he died a saintly and easy death a few hours after. Wow. You will not grudge the good God such a good boy and will be compensated for his death by the greatness which marked the community. <laughs> On his pure and saintly soul, may Jesus have mercy. Yours sincerely, Francis A. Gleason, Chaplain Munster. Archbishop John of Martin of the Dublin Diocese, we need prayers and invite a blessing. Compassionate and loving God, gathered as one family from different religious traditions, to know you is to live, and to serve you is to reign. Through the lives and sacrifices of those we remember today, those who lost their lives in the Battle of Auburn Bridge, our country, our world stands to be a better place, where the values of hope and freedom survive. Hear our voice as we beseech you to sow in the hearts of men and women the love of peace, the wisdom of justice, and the joy of true community. Heavenly Father, may the hope and vision of Father Gleason encourage us to work for a society that our fallen heroes would be proud of. As we commend to you the lives of all who lost, who were lost in World War I, may we never forget the sacrifices they made and the suffering they endured, as we look forward with optimism to the future, never forgetting our past. We make this prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I would like to ask Jared Coverty of ONET, Defence Forces, and Retired Personnel, uh, to lay a wreath. and invite the Royal British Legion to lay a wreath.
Brian Lee, it's my pleasure to invite the Chairman of Class 7 Trust, Mr. John Green, to lay a wreath. Me today. Um, but before we conclude, uh, I'll be very quick with my thanks. I'd like to thank all the people who travel such a long distance, particularly from Pennsylvania, from County Moore, County Kibberary, to come here, and particularly um, once in your own time for coming here and standing through such weather. Uh, Noel Darling, representing part of Recent on the horse. Oh, sorry, Noel Darling, Government uh, Archive, Cheryl Alice. Uh, representing Father Gleason, blessing the ministers of bringing Brian Adams here today. Noel Cullen for coordinating all of the retired uh, army personnel and organisations. Noel is going to lead along by the Jesuit clock, which is just behind me here. We're going along with the wall back towards the museum where we lay a wreath at the grave of Canon Gleason. And then we retire, hopefully, for the warranty and a few biscuits afterwards. Thank you very much. <laughs>